What's up everyone? How's it going? Just on another short day walk today. Got another magazine article to write. This one's for RV Lifestyle magazine. Just another profile on a, a short bushwalk. This one's in Marlborough in the Mount Richmond Forest Park which is on the north bank of the Wairau River. I've actually got a bit of history with this wee track. Back in the late 80s I was working for what was then the New Zealand Forest Service and me and a group of guys, oh, there's four of us in the gang, we actually built this track from scratch. It goes from the road end up Tim's Creek through a bit of old forestry into the native and then breaks out onto a nice grassy river clearing. If you carry on past there the track eventually takes you up onto Mount Richmond itself. So yeah a bit of history. Actually had a wee mishap one day when we were working. There was a lot of small rock outcrops and bluffs that we had to use gelignite on to, to blast out and the process was you'd set all your gelignite up, blast it, and then you'd have to go back and manually to kind of dislodge all the loose rock and you know form a track where the bluff was. One day we went back in there and we started levering a few of these loose rocks out, levered one out and it dislodged a, <laughs> a whole heap of others above it and these huge rocks come down out of the bluff and I had nowhere to go except um, below the track and anyway long story short all these rocks came down on top of me and when all the dust settled um, I couldn't move either of my legs I thought I'd busted them both so they got the ambulance in and carried me out on a stretcher in about a 20 minute drive on the back of a old Hilux into the ambulance off to hospital and luckily it turns out I just had really severe bruising in my legs and eventually came right but yeah a bit of drama but shit that was 30 odd years ago I would have been in my early 20s and back then that sort of job was uh, it was more of a lifestyle than a job so it used to be good we used to do a lot of track work and hut maintenance within the park. We'd um, arrive in the office on Monday morning, shoot down to the Dow Geddes, which is the old stock agent firm. And they used to have a kind of a supermarket within the complex there. Anyway, we used to load up our packs with food, head into the back of the Richmond Forest Park there for a whole week and out, to, out for the weekend. So it was a good life, especially when you're young. Good hard physical work. All the track work we did was with rubbers and axes and shovels. Almost old school you could say. I think nowadays they have small mechanical diggers that do most of the work. But yeah, we'll go up there and see what it's like 30 years later.
good pig mark right there just broken out onto that clearing I was talking about earlier great spot shot about oh, half a dozen deer on this clearing over the years back in the like I say the late 80s early 90s it's a great spot in the spring and early summer This is that bluff I was telling you about where those rocks fell down on me. We kind of blasted all that. And I was down in here levering a, one of the bigger rocks out and it released all this stuff here. I couldn't run that way and I couldn't run that way and the only place I had to go was down there. And of course gravity says rocks are only going to go one way. And yeah, um, they all landed on top of me down in there. Pretty bloody scary at the time. Oh, that was pretty cool actually. Good to um, revisit a place from 30 odd years ago. We spent months up here building that track. In hard case recognising different spots on the track where various things happened or maybe where I shot an animal or some incident happened. Bringing back memories, yeah, good stuff. A lot of bird life up there too, which is pleasing. I'd like to show you guys my basic uh, workflow for processing a raw file in Lightroom. I just uh, I've found a basic workflow or series of steps and stages from taking the, the raw file right through to the exported JPEG. It's a pretty basic process. Uh, I'm not into drastically changing images to make them look like something they weren't. Uh, I just make sure that you know I get the images to where or what I remember the scene looked like. You got to remember that uh, a raw file is the digital equivalent of a film negative. And just as the old film negatives needed developing in a dark room, same with the raw file, they need developing in a computer program. The raw files come out pretty flat and colourless and dull with no contrast, so it's uh, pretty much a necessity to process them in a some sort of computer editing program. So yeah, I'll show you guys that now. Okay, back again. Sorry if the um, video prior to this tutorial was a bit boring. Um, there wasn't a lot to see up Tim's Creek there, unfortunately. I just used the day to um, practice the in-camera video transitions, really. Still kind of experimenting with those, so... One or two of them I think are pretty cool, especially that rotating one. 
a lot of potential, I reckon. But anyway, here we are on uh, the Lightroom program. I uh, brought up an image here of a red hind. And now this is the raw file, of course. So as you can see, it's pretty um, flat and unsaturated, no contrast, dull. So that's what you're looking at uh, with a file straight out of the camera. So we're in the develop module of Lightroom here. And the first thing I do is um, set the lens calibration. I've got a preset for that over here on the left. Basically all it does is um, readjust for any uh, distortion according to whichever lens you're using. So when I click that you'll see it um, it's, it's pretty insignificant but there's just a wee bit of distortion that it corrects for. So uh, once that's done um, you can see this one's almost full frame but just for slightly better composition I'll go into the cropping tool and just bring that down a bit and move her over to the left using the rule of thirds about there be good and then just from there I'll just take a step back and look at the whole image and, and have a look what needs doing to it it's pretty well exposed um, and I usually oops what's that you can see over here on the right hand panel the develop module here I just go down through these in order you can do any order you want but I just follow the order in which they're laid out this makes things easier so the exposure could come up a tad and if you look at the histogram on the right over here that'll tell you a lot about the image um, the left hand side of it is your darks and shadows over here blacks and shadows the mid-tones is that middle section and the highlights and the whites over on this side so you can see that histogram is right in the middle it's pretty good so next thing is contrast now you watch how flat these images are come straight out of the camera if I whack that contrast way over that's exaggerated of course that's over at 100 but you can see how flat they actually are out of the camera so that's it there at zero and just move it over a tad so if you go too far it just looks completely unnatural very sort of gaudy so yeah just um, slide that over a wee bit just so it looks natural and although that's a good exposure there are still a few highlights there and just the next slider down you can decrease those highlights or increase them once again that's zero you can see a few highlights on the neck here and the ear on the sunny side not many but just enough to see that just brought them down nicely there because you've done that you've kind of flattened the image a bit so to bring that back you come down to the white slider and see how that um, just brings that brightness back a bit without bringing the highlights back too much and there's a neat wee tool here if you um, move that slider and push the alt key you get the blank screen now you watch as I shift those white the white slider over and see the whites coming back there the ideal spot is just where they start to appear about there and you can see the before and after it's um just brought that brightness and brightness back from those from dropping the highlights so um yeah shadows there's not much too wrong with that really so I'll leave that at zero the clarity is um, not quite sure how this works. I think it works on the edges, the sharp edges, and it brings those out. And again, way over to the right is too much. Back there, it just makes things a wee bit sharper and clearer and crisper. 
So just over to about 24 looks good. And then you've got vibrance and saturation. Of course, this deals with the color. Now, I never ever touch the saturation because you can see <laughs> it just looks horrible. The vibrance is a much more delicate tool. It's more subtle. You, you watch this. I move saturation way over. It's terrible. Vibrance way over. It's not as bad. Like I say, it's a, it's a much more subtle tool. So those colours there look very flat to me and lifeless. So if we bring those over, that's, that's just gone about a wee bit too much. That grass is too green and her red fur is, is too bright. It's unnatural. So about, about there I reckon. I'll just bring those highlights back a wee bit more. And that looks pretty good. Um, the tone curve, if you've got everything right in camera, um, that basic panel up here is about all you need to deal with. I always say to people with editing Im images, less is more. I see a lot of people um, just rock these sliders backwards and forwards and they just come out with completely unnatural looking images. So... Um, Here's here's the before and after. You see that one on the left? Like I say, is flat, lifeless, colourless. This one on the right is um, the one we've done all the adjustments on, and it looks all pretty good. There's nothing unnatural looking. I don't think about that. So the last thing to do is the sharpening. If I zoom into 100%. I mean that image there is, um, she's right in really good focus. Remember this is zoomed in 100% and I mean you can see every individual here on her nose but in saying that, that's, you know, it's not quite, quite there. You can just see here the, the hair is not super clear and sharp. We can get it better than that. It's, it's actually fine the way it is, it's a pretty sharp image, but you zoom into 100%. You see this um, This shot was taken at ISO 800, so you have a look in the background areas here and you can see quite a bit of noise. So on the detail panel here on the right, first thing I'll do is adjust that luminance noise reduction. You watch the, the noise, especially this image, or this part of the image here. See that grainy noise? As I move that over, see how it softened it out? Whoopsie, computer's playing silly buggers. So there's the before, and just take a moment for it to render. This area here is what we're looking at. Bang, there it goes. See how it smoothed that out? Now, again, I've taken that over to 100 just to prove, to show you what that does. That is way too much because what it's done is taken out a lot of the detail. It's reduced the noise dramatically. But it's also taken all the detail away. You can see this here now is, is not as sharp as it was. So again, back to zero. There we go. So you just move that over until it smooths that noise out. And there's a point where it'll smooth the noise out quite nicely, but not affect detail. Bang, there it goes. It always takes a few minutes to render when you do that. But So that smoothed that out quite a bit. Now I come up to the sharpening itself. I don't bother with these three, or these two, the radius and the detail. I quite honestly, I'm not not too sure about those or how they work but this is the overall sharpening here so if you have a look at say oh my computer's playing silly buggers have a look at the hair on your neck there so that's at the default of 25 
whack that over to 100 bang you see that here just sharpen up immediately and it's it's way too far of course just again I just did that to, to show you the point uh, the hair is just unnaturally sharp it looks um, just horrible and you can see it also unfortunately sharpening also sharpens any noise that's there so the noise that was left in the image after we reduced an uh, luminance slider um, it never takes all the noise away so what was what has been left is now been sharpened so we need to bring that I'll just take it back to the default again and start it from scratch I generally find about halfway is good so the noise is still being reduced and it's sharpened her up quite nicely show you the before and after that's the after that's before after before just have a look at the hair on her neck there that's the before that's after noise reduction and a wee bit of sharpening so that's it really for that image um, it was pretty well exposed in camera so there wasn't a lot to do on it um, I'll just show you the before and after again there you go that looks good happy with that so that is basically how I do it that's just the basic workflow some images need a bit more work than others especially if you get it wrong in camera um, you know you might not get the exposure right or too many highlights or not composed properly compositions bad or that sort of thing so that's my basic workflow for Lightroom I hope that helped helped you in some way I'm sure there's a lot of you out there that know a heck of a lot more than I do about editing and the Lightroom program but hopefully you got something out of that cheers we shall see you in the next video Uh-oh.